What's up, freaks? This is Steve here for Steve Says, episode number 78. And today, we're going to talk about the real, the raw, the live lessons from this quarantine, from the lockdown. What have we learned? What have you discovered? If anything, the word of the day today is going to be discovery. This might be the most real and raw episode yet of Steve Says. But let me tell you this. It's what a lot of people need to hear and maybe what you need to hear right now at this moment and time of where you're at in your life in this quarantine. We have you on the Facebook, on the Instagram, all set up, ready to rock. So now, Steve says, if, if you haven't joined us before for Steve Says, Steve Says, we like to say, some people will hate, but most can relate. We're bringing the fire every freaking second of every second. This is, this is all about, about having a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances. So you can stop being that little bitch and, and start getting your shit together so you can start living life on your own freaking terms. Now I'm gonna try and see the comments as you're going. If you have any questions, need any help with anything, any comments, put them down there below. I'll see it. The, the, the camera's a little far away. We got a few, three different screens here. So we're gonna be focusing, we're always focusing on the mind, the body, and the business. MBB, having a role model mindset how to operate with discipline and energy, confidence, action, and being your freak self. This is exactly what Steve says is all about. And let me tell you, today we're going to get into it. We're going to have some fun. We're, we're going to keep it straight, raw, and real, as raw and real as ever, because this is some things that, that way too many people need to hear. This is the punch in the face, the slap in the face that some people need to wake the fuck up during this lockdown, during this quarantine. I've been saying for a long time that the invasion is coming, whether that's with sickness, disease, whatever it is, the enemy, the competition, whatever it is, the invasion is coming. And guess what? The fucking invasion is here and it's been here. Now, have you been prepared? Now the invasion is here. Have you been prepared? Are you realizing you haven't done the work and the preparation you should have been doing all along to prepare for this invasion? And now that the invasion is here, how are you handling it? Are you adapting and overcoming? Or are you fucking crumbling under the pressure like a little bitch? Like, and that's the only way I could tell it to you. And I tell you that as a coach, not to, not to put you down because this is some stuff you need to hear. This is a wake up call that way too many people in this country need to fucking hear right now. And I'll be the one to tell it to you because no one else is going to tell you these things that I'm going to tell you today. No one else is going to talk to you this way because they're, they're too afraid of hurting someone's feelings. And, and you could see this book, you can see this book right here, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. If you haven't read that book, you need to go read it. Stop giving a fuck what, what people are thinking and saying and all this other stuff. Live life on your own freaking terms. Like this, this stuff that's going on right now. Well, first of all, I hope that you and your family, your friends, your circle are staying active, being productive and staying healthy. That's the first thing I want to I start with. But f- from there, during this lockdown, the quarantine, and I'm worked up. I'm, I'm ready to, I'm getting ready to work out. This is my pre-workout. Coming on here to talk to you, this is my fucking pre-workout. This is my high octane fuel to get me going for my workout. This is all that's needed. It's all that's fucking needed. So let me tell you, how, how are you handling the adversity? Like when you think of, oh, this, this challenge is coming up, this adversity is coming up. How do you handle recession, a recession and pandemic and the setbacks and the struggles? And stuck inside the house for months, out of work maybe for months, or working from home for months. How are you handling this? Are you crumbling? Are you collapsing under this pressure? What do you say when someone tells you things are going to probably get worse before they get better? How do you handle that? How do you react to that? That's like a serious question you need to ask yourself. And we're going to break this down. Now, there's a, a one of my favorite quotes by James Garfield that during the Civil War, he said, of course I deprecate war, but if it is brought to my door, the bringer will find me at home. I love, I love that quote, and I've used it in so many different presentations about so many different topics that it fits. It's like, sure, I don't want war. Sure, I don't want hard times. But when the war comes, when the invasion happens, when the enemy arrives, guess what? I'm here, motherfucker. I'm ready. I'm trained. I'm prepared. I've been ready. I've been, I've been ready and willing and able to deal with this my whole freaking life. That's what that means. Like, sure, I don't want to do it, but when it's time, let's fucking roll. Let's roll. That's what you need to think about. 
So if, if there was a word, and if you've, if you've watched Steve says before, and I'm telling you, I'm fucking fired up today. I'm fucking fired up. So I apologize if I talk too fast. You might have to replay this back in like half speed to hear what the fuck I'm saying because I'm fired up today. So usually if you've watched Steve says before, there's usually a framework. We go through a whole framework with some problems, a couple different keywords and solutions, and it kind of fits down to a, a perfect framework. Today, there's no framework. Today, we're just fucking talking raw. That's it. Because there's, there's too much shit going on out there. We just need to talk about this and discuss it. But if there was a word of the day today, it would be discovery. That would be the word. If we're going to use a word for today, it'd be discovery. Because let me tell you something. We're going to talk about what have you discovered during this time. I want to know and I want to see in the comments. I'm going to come close because I'm blind as hell. Yes, one day at a time, one evolution at a time. Exactly, exactly. Just get to the next hour, right? Get to the next day. You can start, you can say get to the next month, get to the next week, get to the next day. Fuck that. Get to the next step. Get to the next breath. And then appreciate the fucking breath you're on. Appreciate the one that you didn't, wasn't your last. The last one that wasn't your last. How about that shit? Good stuff. So put the comments down there. I'm going to try and catch up as we're going. Just like you eat the elephant. Yes. So let me tell you, if the word of the day would be discovery, I want to know what is what is some, the party is what you make it, I like it. What are some of the things you've discovered? I'm, t- I'm looking at Instagram and, and Facebook, a couple different pages at the same time. So if you don't see the comments, it's not just the voices in my fucking head. It's going over there on Instagram. Discovering that you need to step your game up. And a lot of, a lot of people are discovering that. And that's what this is all about. So if you, that's, that's Dan. If that's your discovery, you need to step up your game. Stay tuned. Do not get off here. We're going to be, at, this is going to be just a quick 20 minutes probably. If that, I don't even know. Who knows how long? Because I, I got a lot to say and not a lot of time to say it. So we're going to talk about what are the different things you've discovered during this. And I'm going to tell you some of the big, big, big major things I've discovered. And we're going to start with the fucked up shit that I've discovered. And then we're going to go into how you can remedy that. How you can make that a little bit better. Some of the action steps you could take to make that stuff better. So first, and I'm sorry if I keep coming close. I am telling you I'm blind. I'm looking up. Skill acquisition. Yes, this is the time to up your skills. The number one thing I've discovered during this, the number one thing I've discovered and seeing people, because it's what a better, what a better, no better time to really sit back and study and, and look at people, look at their reactions, look at what their character is, look how they handle. Like you see the true person during adversity, during craziness, during the fucking invasion. When the gunshots go off, you see the truth. Who's running towards the gunfire? Who's running away from the gunfire? Who's throwing other motherfuckers in front of them during the gunfire? Who's throwing women and children in front of them during the gunfire? That's the stuff that I'm discovering right now. And there's too many nasty motherfuckers out there throwing the women and children in front of them in the gunfire, worried about themselves, and just becoming this disgusting. So what I've discovered, and this is it's it's so simple yet it's so deep. I've discovered that for the first time. In a lot of people's lives, this is the first time they've ever had a chance to sit still, had a chance to stop being on the run and on the move all the time. Because you know what? What they did is they always would be on the move. They'd get a flat tire. They wouldn't mind getting a flat tire. They would act like it and bitch about it for like three weeks, but they were glad they got the flat tire because it killed some more time. It kept them busy. It kept them occupied, kept them distracted. Then, they, then, of course, t- you got to do stuff with your family. Take the kids to soccer practice and sit there at soccer practice. And then scroll on the fucking internet the whole time at soccer practice instead of watching your kid play soccer. They d- just found busy work. Found distractions. Stupid fucking Netflix shows about some line and some fucking dumbass guy with a hat or whatever, that, whatever everyone talks about. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Like, people just find distractions. Their whole life, they found distractions. But this moment now, they've been stuck at home, was the first time... That And whatever you believe in doesn't matter. The God, or we'll just call it the universe. This is the first time the universe has taken them, grabbed them by the shoulders, and sat them in a fucking chair, and said, sit down, shut the fuck up. And they were forced to sit down and shut the fuck up for the first time in their life. So during this time that the universe made them stop, made them pause or whatever, have their social spacing and all this other crap, all this other bullshit. We'll get into that later a little bit. This is the first time in their life that the universe has forced them to stop, to slow down, to stop with their fake 
bullshit distractions that they've been using for years and decades in their entire life to neglect the important shit they should be doing and focusing and working on. The first time they've had a chance to sit still and actually get inside their own fucking head and actually have some, how about this, some fucking self-reflection, which led to some self-awareness. Now, they were told probably and coached probably for months and years that they need to be journaling. They need to be writing things down. They need to write down their goals every day. They need to write down with their their a gratitude journal. They need to be writing stuff and thinking and meditating and focusing and stopping and taking time for their mental and emotional health. They've probably been told that and they're like, oh, that's fucking stupid. That's not for me. I don't have time for that because I got to go fix a flat tire. I don't have time for that stuff. It's not for me. That's stupid. That stuff is stupid. I don't believe in that stuff. That's dumb. So that same person that always thought this stuff was dumb, the universe said, okay, motherfucker, sit down, shut up. I'm going to make you do this. And now as they're sitting down and shutting up for once in their life, pulled away from the stupid distractions, they are having the most massive discovery that they've ever had in their fucking life. Their self-reflection, which led to their self-awareness, telling themselves, and finally having this realization, this breakthrough discovery, that they are fucking miserable. They don't like themselves. They fucking hate themselves. They don't like their situation. Maybe don't even like their family, their partner, their spouse, their fucking goat, whatever they're into. They don't like their house, they don't like where they live, they don't like where their job, they don't like the people around them, they don't like their neighbors, they don't like their friends, they don't like their family. This is what they're realizing, this is what they're discovering. They're not discovering that they are stuck at home and a, a, a pandemic and all this other stuff. They're not discovering anything else, anything positive. And, and this, to me, is positive. Like, this is great, this is great. This is a fucking wake-up call for those people. The universe slapped the shit out of them. Fucking bitch slap them. Like, wake up, motherfucker. Shake them the fuck up. Wake them the fuck up. So they can realize that they're fucking miserable. And they've been miserable. Realize they're going to have the discovery that they, not, that they hate the way that they're operating. They hate the decisions they made in their life that got them to where they are because they hate their current situation. How about that? It's the universe slapping them left and right, nonstop, telling them, Making them be, reflect on their fucked up decisions they made. The fucked up things that they've ignored and neglected for years that they were probably told and taught and coached and trained on. And finally they have to sit still for once and they're having this major breakthrough. And that was my biggest discovery that I realized that this, that is what people have learned the most from this. But there's, now they can go with two different directions. Two different directions. Once they make that discovery, you know, if that was me, and I've made many discoveries during this crazy time. But this isn't about me. We're not going to get into that right now. I've made tons of discoveries. So if you make those discoveries, you have two different directions you can go. You can take it and use it to make, your, make the worst version of yourself. Or you can take it and use it to demonstrate the best fucking version of yourself. Demonstrate your real character, who you're meant to be, who your people around you and your family and your friends want you to be, who they fucking deserve you to be. Or you can use that as an excuse to be a prick, to be a whining, complaining prick. That's what you could do. Like, I've, I've been putting videos out almost daily trying to help people through this stuff, help clients and friends and coaching clients from all over the world. And you should see some of the hate messages that come back. Of course, a lot of them are positive. But right now, we're talking about the people who need to hear this shit, the people who need to be woken the fuck up, need to be told to sit down and shut the fuck up. That's who we're talking to right now. The, the complainers, the whiners. When they made, had that self-discovery, holy shit, I fucking hate my life. So what am I going to do? I'm going to complain and bitch and moan about every fucking thing that goes on. That's option A or option B. Fucking do something about it. So fucking simple. But yet it's like a major fucking breakthrough. Be a miserable complaining prick or do something about it. Fucking simple. A and B. You don't even need a middle ground there. That's it. That's all there is. I'll get some... I'll get some hate mail and hate messages about, I, I, of course, the, the, the quarantine is great for me because there's palm trees in my background, in my backyard. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what someone discovered about why the quarantine 
why I'm able to handle it and stay positive because there's palm trees in my background. Do you hear this? Do you hear what I'm saying? Because there's fucking palm trees in my background. I'm talking about going for a hike, going for a walk, spending time with my kid, reading books, getting workouts, getting in the best shape of my life, meditating, scheduling their day, how to structure their day, how to have habits, how to do journaling, how to meditate, how to focus, how to get in fucking awesome shape, how to maybe be for one time the role model that your kids deserve you to be. All that shit that I just mentioned, guess what? It's fucking free. It can be done anywhere in the world, but yet the responses I'll get from some of the miserable people out there will be, yeah, well, you have palm trees in your backyard. I'm not making this, you can't make this shit up. You can't make it up. You can't make it up. Going for a walk down the street is fucking free. Working out, doing a set of push-ups is fucking free. You can do that shit anywhere, any fucking time. You don't need a gym. You don't need equipment. You don't, even need a, you don't need a coach. You don't need a trainer. Of course, you want to get to other levels, you should have all that stuff. A coach, a trainer, a mentor. You just need to fucking take the route of do something about it. Not bitch and complain about it. Oh, well, that will work for you. Or that wouldn't work for me. If I break down what my habits are, what my schedule is for the day, how I break it down, how I do it in time blocks. Well, that doesn't work for me because I have to work at this time. Well, no shit, motherfucker. I'm giving you an example of how it can work. Of course, you need to rearrange things to fit your day, but use the, the idea, the strategy to have some structure in your day. Like this is the, this, These are the people who had that discovery that they're fucking miserable. They hate where they are. So they're going to complain rather than do something about it. Though, though these are the people who said they didn't have time to do all this stuff that they should have been doing all along. And you know, the, the funniest thing about this whole thing, when it comes to, I have business coaching clients, CEOs coaching them th- through this time, helping them with their businesses, fitness coaching clients. We have clients in our gym in New York. But the, the main things that we are using tools and strategies and tactics to help them through it, you know what it is? It's the most basic fundamental shit that should have been getting done all along. And if you did that shit all along and weren't, a, weren't a, a resistant prick to begin with all along and did these basic little simple steps that you, that you were teaching now that's been getting taught all along, if you were doing those all along, when disaster strikes and a pandemic strikes and you're stuck at home and the adversity comes, you'd be fine whether or not you have a motherfucking palm tree in your backyard. And if... What I'm saying rubs some people the wrong way. Guess what? I don't care because you need to hear this. I'm going to be the one to tell you this stuff. To give you that slap upside the head to snap out of it. So you stop being the whining, bitching, complaining fool and start being the one that does something about it. Fucking do something about it. Like seriously. So simple. Use this as an excuse to be the best version of yourself, not the worst version of yourself. There was a picture I saw on Instagram. I talked about it the, a couple weeks ago. Awesome picture. It had a line of the critics. Uh, there was a three line, three lines, people in line. The line of the critics was like this long line of like thousands of people. There's a line of the talkers, about half the size of the line of the critics, and a line of the doers, and the doers line was empty. All the fucking critics, all the fucking talkers, but no fucking doers. All the one criticizing, talking shit, complaining, bitching, moaning, but not willing to do something about it. Fucking do something about it. And let me tell you this. All I'm doing is sharing my experiences along my journey. I don't know shit. No one knows it all. I try to learn something new from everyone I meet. In fact, it's one of my fucking core values. No negativity allowed. Find some, learn something new and positive from everyone you meet, from every situation. No one knows it all. But let me tell you this. Those complainers that aren't willing to do something about it need to have some motherfucking respect for experience. Some other, like, think about this, right? Everyone wants money, right? Everyone wants to make more money. Yes, I said the M word. Oh my God, the evil M word. I'm not afraid to fucking say it. Everyone wants fucking money. Everyone wants success. Everyone wants money and success, right? But they're that one that just finally had that self-discovery that they fucking hate where they are. So what do they do? They have resentment and hate and jealousy for anyone who has a fucking nickel. 
for anyone who has a, a, an ounce of success. They'll talk shit and try to drag that person down. For the very things that they want themselves, they fucking hate on. It makes absolutely no fucking sense instead of doing something about it to have that same success and money that someone else has. It's fucking crazy. Like the shit you want, the, the, the person that you want to like be like is the one you'll talk shit about or try to drag down rather than do something about it. Like how about this for a novel idea? Instead of resenting that person who's maybe where or at least on the way to where you want to be, how about instead of that, you fucking absorb some of the shit that they say. Absorb some of the shit that they do. How about you, imagine that, befriend them, follow them, or even this, help them. What can you do to help them? Wait a minute, why would I help them? They're money and successful. Wrong fucking way of thinking. That's the whining complainer, not to do something about it. We're talking about the fucking doers, the empty lives. That's what we're talking about. How can you help them? How can you learn from them? Because guess what? You need to put in your fucking time. People want to sit there on the couch and don't want to do shit and want to make more money than when they were doing shit. Waiting for the knight in shining armor on the white fucking horse to come and save the day. That doesn't exist, motherfucker. You're the knight in shining armor on the white horse to save your own fucking day by doing something about it. You got to put in the fucking time, put in the effort with the right attitude. And those same critics, they'll sit there on that couch talking shit about the someone who's had maybe a drop of success or has a palm tree in their background, backyard, and they'll talk shit about them. They'll talk shit about, like, look at look at small business owners. Look at small businesses, how small businesses right now are just getting destroyed across America. They're getting fucking destroyed. Businesses that people worked decades to build are now gone. I have friends, business owners in all industries that have already closed up shop, that weren't able to make it through. After 10, 15, 20 years, sacrificing their life for it. Think of a small business. Think of a small business because the critics to small businesses never created or did or or hired or contributed anything to anything. But they'll be the ones to tell you how to run a small business. They'll be the ones to tell you how to do it. But think of a small business. How, what they act, what they contribute. They are, have employees. They're paying people who are then paying their families. Then if they're paying people, those people are spending money throughout the local community, right? Keeping the economy moving in the local area, using services of local people in the community. If it's a, if it's a business like a gym, I have a lot of gym owner followers, a lot of gym owner friends. If it's a business like a gym, they're keeping people healthy. They're probably donating to charities, probably still even through this. Imagine that. That'd be crazy. They're paying staff even through this. Some of those small businesses that are able to. They're still paying for services and products. Still trying to contribute to the local economy. Our our gyms are still offering free classes every week. Throwing out free kids classes. Even a free freaking dance class. You won't see me teach that shit because that would just be horrible. You don't want to see that. I retired that dancing freak Steve in 2000 and I don't even know. 2005 in Cancun, Mexico, and there is a video somewhere around to prove it, but I will not, that video's been buried, I don't know where it is, that dancing Steve is retired, but we even have a free dancing class, a free kids class, a free boxing boot camp class every week, along with other free classes, so this, this is not a, a, a rant about whether or not small businesses should open, it's just, it's just talking about the struggles that the small businesses go through, and the critics that think they have, they know it all, think they have all the answers, but they haven't contributed to shit, having created shit. Like again, the universe takes that person and tells them, shut the fuck up and sit the fuck down. Then don't get me started on the essential business stuff. Now, let me get, let me just be clear about this. We have a gym in, in part of New York and you know, New York's been hit hard by this, but you know when we're going to open up our business back up is when the fuck we feel like it's the right time. That's when, not when someone else tells us to, when we feel like it's the right fucking time. That might be after we're allowed to. Allowed to. Imagine that. Allowed. You have a business for 20 fucking years and you have to wait to be allowed to do it. This is besides the point. I'm not, on, I'm not even talking about that. But essential businesses, right, are, are, run, are thriving through this. Fucking McDonald's. A line around the motherfucking block. 
yet a gym is closed. Liquor store, open for business. It's essential because motherfuckers need to drink. But a gym is closed down. Even a private studio, even a one-on-one training studio, one-on-one that they could have complete control, like one-on-one personal training. Nope, shut down. Not essential. Not essential. Because here's another thing that I've discovered about this whole craziness and this whole thing. Obviously, you know about the immune system and boosting your immune system and all this stuff. But one thing I've noticed, most of the people that get sick, hospitalized, and unfortunately that have died to this, have been overweight, unhealthy, pre-existing conditions, weak immune systems. Like, if that's not a new discovery of my own about why we need to push harder than fucking ever to stay in shape, to work out, to eat healthy, to train fucking hard, to train for the invasion every day. Don't just exercise. Don't just work out. We're fucking training. We're training for war, for when shit like this happens. You'll have the fucking defenses to, to, to fight it off. I have, we, I have clients close to 60 years old, two of them. They got infected. They've been training with us for three years, over three years. They got, the whole family got infected. They missed the live work, and we do live workouts on video workouts, interactive workouts. They missed the workouts for about a week and a half, two weeks. A fucking amazing. They got that shit and kicked it because they were healthy, training hard, had a positive mindset. Yes, a positive mindset. That alone is, is more than half the battle of fighting off diseases and weaknesses and boosting your immune system, all that stress and all this other stuff. Yeah, we talked about that a couple weeks ago, that the stress and the cortisol, what it could do to you. Just being healthy and, and, and working out, lifting weights, doing your cardio, eating healthy, boosting your immune system is fucking priceless. Huge discovery. Again, this is the shit that has been getting done all along. Would get you through this stuff without being that prick on the couch that's miserable, complaining and bitching and moaning about everything instead of doing something about it. Think about it. That's what it's all about. It's, it's, ask yourself, where's your stress levels? How are your stress levels? How are you handling your stress levels? Because you know chronic stress is going to break your body down. It's going to break your mind down over time. It's going to leave you open to illness. It's going to break down your fucking immune system. Just being a negative prick, literally, literally just being a fucking negative prick will break down your immune system and make you more susceptible to any fucking disease or virus or anything all year round, not even during a a, a pandemic. So how are you? Are you eating the right way? Are you eating healthy? Are you getting your freaking veggies and, and the fruits when you need to? Are you getting your training for at least an hour a day for several days a week? At this point, I just took a day off. Not this weekend. Last weekend, I took a day off, I think, on Saturday. And I realized that that was the first fucking day off I took since the entire since the whole lockdown started. I didn't have a day off in two months of training. Because it, 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 we're in war. So it's like, we got to go. We got to train. We got to fight harder than ever. This is the time to stand the fuck up and fight. You are at war. Make no mistake about it. You need to train harder and be healthier than ever. Have a more positive mindset than ever. You cannot be that prick on the couch. I can't say that enough times. You need to train hard. Raise your body temperature. Build up that heat. Burn those calories. That's going to keep you stronger. That's going to fight off infection. You're going to burn off the stress. You're going to get it out of your system. Boot camp, strength training, weightlifting, boxing. It's going to do it for you. You need to get your sleep. You know, I used to get... Three or four hours of sleep a day. Did that for at least 10 years. Thought it made me cool. Thought it made me tough. Thought it was a badge of honor. Then I realized it made me fucking stupid. Thinking, oh, I don't need that sleep. I can handle it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's times when you have to do pull an all-nighter when you have to deal with stuff. Like when this shit first hit, I had to pull an all-nighter to shift our business overnight. Pulled an all-nighter for days straight. So you do need to train for that. It should not be a regular habit. But, you, but I will train A few times a year where I will get minimal amount of sleep. And I'm talking about 30 minutes, an hour of sleep a day for three or four days stretch just for my own training. That actually happens during the project. That's why I wore this. This is the project shirt because it's wartime. It's time to go to war. And that's what training men to do in the project is to go to go to fucking war. So during that time, I train myself to operate at the highest possible level, highest possible levels of energy with zero sleep. And I just do it a couple times a year. 
so that when crazy shit happens like this and I have to do it, I have no choice. It's like, okay, I've already trained for this. I'm built for this. Let's fucking roll. When a bringer of it comes, they will find me at my door waiting for it, waiting for the invasion, waiting for the war. That's the way you need to do it. That's what you need to think about. And it's fucking crazy. We have to tell people. We have to tell grown ass adults, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Take a shower. Get out of your fucking pajamas. Are you fucking kidding? We got to tell adults to wash their hands. No shit. Again, it's so crazy. We had to sit people down, shut them the fuck up to tell them the basics they should have been doing their entire fucking life. And if you build that foundation, have those basics and do everything we're talking about here, you'll never have anything to worry about. Stop fucking smoking. Like, holy shit, stop smoking fucking cigarettes. Yes, it breaks down your fucking immune system. Stop drinking so much fucking alcohol or drink no alcohol. I'm actually going to share a story about alcohol for those of you still with us. I'm going to share a story about alcohol. Give me a thumbs up if you're still with us on Instagram. Give me a thumbs up on Facebook if you're still with us. I'm about to tell you a story I don't think I've ever shared on any video or whatever. So I never was a big drinker. When I was a kid, a teenager in the Marine Corps, sure, we used to drink all the time, get all crazy, get in fights, cause trouble before the Marine Corps. Then in the, in the Marine Corps, of course, that we were drinking, partying, crazy freaking Marines, right? Came out, never was really a big drinker. Here and there, I'll drink. As an adult with kids, maybe once a month have a, a drink or two. Maybe, not even. Once or twice a year, maybe have enough to even get a buzz or whatever. So there was one event I was at with my kids, didn't drink in a while, still here, yes, didn't drink in a while, had way too many drinks, plus it was, I didn't drink for so long that you know when you don't drink, it fucking hits you, didn't drink for such a long time, got fucking wasted, got hammered, and this is a a professional event, a business event, whole family was there, tons of clients were there, got a little too drunk, this is now, I don't know, two years ago, I don't even know how long ago, and I don't get drunk often. So when you drink, it fucking hits you. On the car ride home, I get in the car, about 30 seconds into the drive, swing open my door thinking I need to puke. And again, I've never told this story because I'm going to share it with you because you're here with us and we're telling it like it is. We're fucking telling it like it is. Raw and straight, uncut, telling it like it is. Swung the door open to the car, thinking I have to puke, tried to puke out the thing. Car stops, I jump out. Now this is with my entire family in the car, my kids in the car. Head spinning, realize if I get back in the car, I'm gonna fucking puke all over the place. So I just say, Give me my knife. I'm just gonna walk from here. And I'm in the middle of a highway, fucking, it'd be a three hour walk home probably. Kids are in the back seat, one of them sleeping. Tyson's awake and just looking at me. I looked in the back seat, drunk as fuck, and that was my discovery. That was my discovery that some of these people are having now on their fucking couch. That was my discovery. Just seeing him, fuck, and I'm wasted, hammered. I said, you know what? I need to sit down, I need to shut the fuck up, and I need to do something about it. That was the last time I ever had a sip of alcohol, now damn close to two years ago. And I wasn't even a drunk, wasn't like an alcoholic or anything. But obviously, had some instances where it affected me that my kid is looking at me like that, crying, thinking that I'm never going to make it home because I'm walking down a fucking highway with a knife in my hand. Yeah. Real stuff, real raw shit. That's what I'm telling you. This stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you and telling you and trying to help you with is just shit I've learned along the process that have helped me and, and tons of people across the world along on our journeys. That's it. And things I've learned from other people that were successful and had the evil money and they were successful. And I learned from them how to operate, how to cope instead of resenting them. Imagine that, befriending them, helping them, reaching out to them, getting coached by them. A fucking amazing what that could do for you. So that was a drinking story. Anyway, haven't drank since then. So how have you, what have you been doing? What discoveries have you made during this time? And those are my big ones. The discovery that the people are realizing that for the first time in life, they're having some self-reflection and realizing they're fucking unhappy. That's what they're realizing. And you have two choices. Be a fucking prick or do something about it. The other discovery, which we already know, but now it's just amplified like multiplied times a million is the effect of health and fitness and exercise and positive mentality and coaching and mentoring and guidance. So if you need help in your fitness, help 
in your mindset, help in, in guiding you through this stuff, mentoring you through this, send me a message. Let's talk. Let's see how we can help you out because I'm telling you, don't be the prick on the fucking couch. Do something about it. Stop making excuses. Stop being resentful towards the people that you want to fucking be like. Get off your ass. Well, first of all, before you get up off your ass, first, sit down. Shut the fuck up. Make the decision that you're going to do something about it. How many questions, comments, put them down below. Tell me about what have been your major discoveries during this craziness. I want to hear about it. Let's talk about it. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.